What's up Rockstars, how's it going? Today I have a fun video for you. I'm going to be talking about games I've changed my mind on. All right, now before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to my sponsor of today's video, Opera GX. Now, I had seen advertisements for them before, but I never actually tried it. I decided to give it a try, see if it's something that benefited me. It has benefited me hugely. I want to tell you about it very quickly. So let's go and speed through this. So some of the features I like, the very biggest thing for me was this GX control. So one of the things it allows you to do is do a network limiter or a RAM limiter, or see which tabs are taking up a whole bunch of your CPU stuff or anything like that. When I do renders, it takes a long time to actually render out a video to export it and do stuff like that. It's very intensive on the computer. It's why I got this laptop. So being able to limit my Chrome thing, but still use it, very helpful. That has been a huge game changer for me. It definitely has, but it has another nice things as well. So for instance, it has like uh, all your social media stuff. So I have discord here. I can talk on discord all day long. Uh, my patrons know that very, very well, but it also has YouTube messenger and a whole bunch of other apps that you can do. And what's great is it doesn't take you out of what you're doing. So it's just this little sidebar. You can pop it in and you can pop it out. I also listen to music a lot. So I really appreciate this music player. You can kind of judge my music however you wish. I don't care. Uh, but seriously, like this has been a really big thing. By the way, the rumbling, my current, like I keep listening to that every day. Anyway. Uh, so really do do that. They have a lot of great features there. One of the other great things is uh, I got to get up with the kids or I got to go do stuff or whatever. And I don't like to just leave stuff in like purgatory in a tab. So they actually have this great feature here. Like on YouTube, you can click this button here. It gives you a little QR code. You can go on your phone. This is my actual phone. You can press the Opera GX, press the plus. You can do the scan thing and you can scan it and it will start playing. And I think that's super cool. So that is awesome. And there it is. Now I'm playing on this so I can quickly go if I need to go do something. Very much appreciate that. I really like the uh, mobile app and how it integrates with that. So anyway, there is a link in the description below. Feel free to check that out. Again, it, it, this is no cost to you. Your Chrome apps will still work and unport everything. Literally even your extensions work. It's fantastic. It's like Chrome, but better in my opinion. I've had a blast with it. That's Opera GX. I've been using it as my daily driver, my browser, my default browser, my computer. And I don't plan on changing it right after this video either. It's actually been helpful. I use it all the time. Link in the description below. Let's get to the video. Now, as always, a huge shout out to my patrons and YouTube members for their financial support. It is through their support that this channel is possible. If you appreciate the videos I make every single week for you guys, and you can give even a dollar a month, I would greatly appreciate it. There is a link down in the description below. Thank you so much. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, now I have 10 here, so it is a top 10 because it's really the, I mean, the main 10. There's no particular order though. They all have their uh, nuances I'm gonna be talking about, though I will end on a positive note for you guys so you can leave this video feeling a little good. Uh, so first things first is Sheol. Let's actually start good. Uh, Sheol is a game I actually reviewed and I ended up not backing it and I kind of regret not backing it. Uh, as I've progressed, you guys have seen most of my uh, career in board gaming. Uh, I, I got into board gaming, had a very small collection, and started a YouTube channel pretty promptly on it. And so uh, I was very new to things, and I've been growing as a board gamer. Over time, my situation has always changed as well, and my likes and dislikes and stuff like that. Um, at the time, I didn't back it because I didn't feel the combat had enough oomph for uh, my gaming group to really appreciate. Since then though, uh, my son has become very willing to play a lot of games and I've played a lot more games that aren't super combat focused. I tend to like more games than my group likes and I've become more okay with uh, just uh, n that not being a huge focus of something and still enjoying it and having fun. So I do kind of wish I had backed it because it looks interesting. I like the the um you know supporting an indie company and stuff like that as well but i honestly think i'd get some game time in it with my son and uh, enjoy it and so kind of a bummer uh but I, I think i like it more now than i did back when i actually reviewed it and a lot of that's just based on personal growth and the in the hobby uh and just kind of uh, different situations and stuff like that uh and um, i think it just it looks like it turned out pretty well so there's that as well uh on the flip side massive darkness one was my first kickstarter that i received 
And while I was actually still fairly critical of it, even way back when in a little baby KOA land, well, brand new to this kind of thing, um, I, I, I don't think I was critical enough. Now, again, part of that is because I hadn't played a whole lot of games before then. Uh, it's, it's just, you know, like uh, as a reviewer, I've been able to do more and more and play more and more games, uh, more games than I review even, just because putting a review together it takes a long time. But uh, if I were to play Massive Darkness 1 today, I would be much harsher on it and uh, the fact that I haven't in a long time is pretty telling. Uh, I would pick mini games above it and so while I think I was fairly critical and it's probably for the, mostly the same reasons um, I'd perhaps add quite a few more uh, negatives on top of it and overall have it as kind of an, a, a bad score. I think that there's some good in it as well. I love the dungeon romp versus the dungeon crawl. There's still a lot of merit in something I don't recommend but uh, overall it's it's not a winner for me. Now, flip side of that, Rising Sun, another one I was huge on, and I feel some of it was miniature focus versus gameplay, and my love and adoration of Blood Rage, which has also diminished, though didn't make the list here, because I still think that it, it wouldn't quite hit this top 10 on shifts. Uh, it, it lowers like most games, I think, over time. Uh, but it's it's still something I quite enjoy. But Rising Sun in particular had a few issues that I didn't like. I didn't like how um, the the Shinto were were quite strong if you were the only player in that, because you could just put one Shinto on one area and get you know, all the Ronin you could want and stuff like that. Like it, you really have to. Um, it, it, it it's pretty much the Loki strategy to me um, because you could spam Ronin and then just you know uh, do stuff there with them that's kind of wonky and and off what you would think, uh, but it's ingrained in the gameplay. And also didn't like the mandates, and really, the mandates in particular, I've become pretty stickler on playing a game, not having the game play me, and I feel any time I'm handed by the game my options as opposed to uh, being able to get them. It's it's just, I, I, I just don't like several aspects of it. I think the stretch goals are kind of shoehorned in, and uh, even then they try to limit them to be able to make them even viable, and even then it's like, hey, would you like a slower recruit process? Well, add these stretch goals and you'll have more options. So somebody will sit there looking at them longer. Like it just the alliance is all of it, not my thing. And so I think I've soured on that even more over time, not less. Valor and Villainy. I backed it. I never played it. That's proof enough. Uh, I thought it looked cool. That looked interesting. I have very little interest in actually playing it uh, at this point. And uh, I'm not sure that hype will come back. So soured on that one quite a bit as well. Same with Tiny Epic Tactics, so I did play it. Uh, it was a good lesson learned on uh, uh, finding out that a, a game needs a certain amount of oomph for me to be able to play and enjoy. And uh, it's not even the last one I'll mention on this, so there's one even higher uh, when it comes to just kind of disappointment once it arrives. Um, I got the Tiny part, but I didn't get the Epic or the Tactics with it, and that's kind of the bummer uh, in my feeling on that one. Uh, Nova Aetis Renaissance. Uh, I backed this more than I should have. And I honestly, right now, I'm not looking forward to playing at all. I think I want to try maybe, but um, I just I haven't had a, a big uh, hit with Ludus Mass Studio other than DEI, which I loved, though they've taken their sweet time getting that out to us. And as far as I knew, it was pretty close to done. The prototype I played, which I loved a lot and really enjoyed, um, just wasn't, it didn't seem that far off to me. Like it seemed like it was pretty much a done deal. Yet here I am. All these years later, still with no DEI, so who knows on that one. Um, but besides that, I just I haven't been very happy with many of their real deliveries. They're just the, the the games they make with the mechanics they have just aren't for me. It just seems a little too sloppy, a little too much for my taste. So Nova Yetis Renaissance, I love the concept. I don't even know if I'm ever going to play it. It just it just kind of ho-hum right now. Uh, let's see. Next up. Oh, Twilight Imperium. That's a fun one. So Twilight Imperium is something I would have said I would have never enjoyed, though I've played it now and I did enjoy it. Does it earn the time it takes? That is a question. Uh, I would say that there are better games to play in that time period. However, I didn't hate my experience either. And for a game that uh, has that kind of action limited thing where people are taking the options that you may want, I actually quite enjoyed my time with it. Uh, it was a lot, a lot more tactical than I, I felt. It wasn't too bad that other people get to pick things that I may have wanted. And uh, overall, it was just kind of actually a fun little experience that uh, I quite enjoyed. So yeah, definitely uh, raised on that one, I feel, because before it would have been like, uh, yeah, no interest. And now it would have been like, I mean, yeah, sure, I guess we can play that, which that's an improvement. <laughs> um, let's see, Bloodborne. 
Bloodborne is something that I actively don't even like seeing on my shelf at this point. Uh, I enjoyed my time with it enough once I started to do the house rule. There is some good things to it, but I backed so much of it, and so much of it just seems completely useless to me. And so much of it was this ho hum and, you know, kind of e easily, you know, put in and, and, and done on the cheap uh, with corner cut corners cut very obviously and and all sorts of uh quality concerns that uh yeah just 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 kind of sad i even backed it at this point uh and sad that that's the game i got for such an awesome ip uh kind of a wasted potential there if you ask me uh let's see next up also either field same kind of thing i actually went all in on this i bought all of it uh, on the Kickstarter, they keep adding more and more in the Pledge Manager. It's what a Wicked Realm does. Um, but like, I was like, all the game, yes, please give me all the expansions. Loved the uh, theme of the minis. I loved the concept of exploring a dream. I ended up disliking both the simplistic card play, which I thought was overly simplistic. Again, one of those things, kind of like the tiny epic, um, or even the massive darkness, where it's like I, I need a little bit more oomph uh, to to my gameplay, but. On top of that, I didn't like how the story's told. Um, there, I like having a mystery where it's like, oh my gosh, there's all these different reveals, and this is so interesting and cool. Um, if you think of a show like Dark on Netflix, something like that, it's like every episode, there's like a heavy hitter, like, oh my gosh, this is a huge reveal. Yet there's just more that it goes, the the, the hole goes deeper in, into the, you know, uh, Alice in Wonderland kind of uh, scenario. With either fields, I felt like I was reading Lord of the Rings, but nothing was ever explained to Frodo. So he's just kind of like experiencing things and stuff's happening, but there's no real explanation or depth to it. It reminded me of the polar bear in the uh, show Lost, if you remember that, where it's just like, well, yeah, there's a polar bear. Why not? Well, I mean, it's kind of cool. So yeah, but yeah, but why is it there? And hey, we're not going to explain that. Just, just, just admire how cool it is. It's, uh, it's a little too shallow for me. So that was a big bummer because I spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars on that and I ended up being kind of meant on the gameplay and actively didn't like how the story is told yeah that's a structure element and a personal preference of course like everything but just for me not not what keeps me going I, it's not a page turner for me just to see cool stuff happening in dreams but not really have a, a good explanation i'm sure it gets there i didn't invest enough time to get there um so th there's that too uh Lastly, Claustrophobia 1643. This is something I was actually positive on, but I have only grown more positive over time uh, for a multitude of reasons. One of the things is my appreciation for how limited in scope it was. It amazes me that a game just launched like that. It, uh, Bard's Song reminded me of this a little bit because it has one gameplay expansion. And it's just so rare for these games, especially these dungeon crawl games, to offer so much content in the core game and then that's it. That's the game. That's what you get. It's not like Bloodborne, right? It's not giving me 15 different expansions and 72 different playable characters and 10,000 hours of uh, gameplay, uh, you know, game sessions of, of fluff and filler. And it's not 300,000 plus words I got to read. It's just a fun game with lots of scenarios, a lot of content, but a confined amount that's easily actually paintable and playable and an enjoyable two-player experience that doesn't overstay its welcome. It, there's, there's there's a ton to love about Claustrophobia 1643, from the quality to, of, of like, you know, the production, to the amount of content, to the themes cool, just, I've, I've really grown to appreciate that in my collection more, not less, over time. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely a positive for me. And guys, that is 10 games that I have changed my mind on, where I liked it, and then I didn't, or I didn't like it, or I did, or I dislike it more, or I like it more. There's a wide variety there. I would love to hear your thoughts on so go ahead and look at your collection. Let me know what game you have changed your opinion on and why. That's what I'm really interested in is why. It was it was kind of interesting for me to, to make these notes and be like, oh, that's the one. But then I was like, but it's for a different reason. It's, oh, I appreciate this more. Oh, I found out I didn't like this. Or, oh, this seemed like something to me, but then it ended up not being something to me. Or, or you know, maybe I prejudged it when I shouldn't have, right? Like the Twilight Imperium, that kind of thing. So, you know, there, there's all these different... Um, reasons why one might change it. it could just be the hype laid down though i think that's kind of in general across the board so i, was, I looked for something that was more than just you know i'm not on the delivery hype anymore like why why would i fundamentally i think change my opinion on this game and uh yeah it was kind of interesting what i came across so uh yeah feel free to do that and then let me know if it's a game you've soured on are you going to keep it in your collection would love to have that conversation with you guys thank you so much for watching again check out that opera gx 
freaking awesome browser. I use it all the time, every day now, and I appreciate a lot of its features. It's actually quite nice. So uh, yeah, go and check that out. Description down below. Go ahead and click that link. And uh, with that, thank you so much, guys. Have a great rest of your day. I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye, guys.